A few years back, Professor Rama made a video on refraction or not, in which he answers a question asked by a student, when light is incident perpendicular from one medium to another, say from vacuum into <coughs> water, its speed changes, but it does not bend. So should we say it is refracting or not? Professor Verma says it's refracting and I disagree. <laughs> and in this video, I wanna talk about why I disagree with that. Let's first get something straight. The disagreement is not on in the underlying physical phenomena, okay? When light goes from one medium to another, its speed changes because of which it bends when incident obliquely. And I think we all agree on that. No disagreement over here. The disagreement comes on the definition of refraction. So Professor Verma says the first part, whenever light goes from one medium to another, the fact that its speed changes, this itself is what we call refraction. Bending or not doesn't matter. Refraction is just the fact that speed changes. And so from this definition, um, the in this particular case, refraction is happening because it's going from one medium to another, its speed is changing, and so refraction is happening, okay? Whereas, I think that's not what refraction is. I think the definition of refraction is the fact that it bends. Whenever light bends, we say that is what refraction is, okay? And the reason for refraction is that the speed changes, but refraction itself is bending of light. And so from this definition, light is not changing its direction, it's not bending, and therefore from this definition over here, there is no refraction happening. And I think this is what refraction is, and this is why I disagree with Professor Verma. So the question could be, why do I do that? Why do I disagree over here? Well, um, the first and the foremost reason is most sources talk about the defined refraction this way. It bends, and let's, let's look at that together. So let's Google this, and let's search for refraction. And what do we see? Well, let's look at the definition. Refraction in physics is the change in the direction of the wave passing from one medium to another. So it's talking about changing in the direction. Let's look at what Wikipedia says. Refraction is the redirection of wave as it passes from one medium to another. What else? Refraction is the, oh, this is by juice. Okay, never mind. <laughs> when light travels from air into water, it slows down, causing it to change direction slightly. This change of direction is called a refraction. Refraction is bending of wave. Hyperphysics is a pretty popular, very, very good source of physics. Is a bending of wave. So you can see almost all the sources are talking about refraction as bending of light, which is what I said as well. And so from this definition, when it comes to normal incidence, if you go back to the normal incidence, it's not bending. And so there is no refraction happening. Now I also searched books like, very popular books like Feynman Lectures, University of Physics, Resnick and Halliday. But I think they like they haven't like really defined, defined refraction. I don't think that they considered refraction as like this big thing where it requires a formal definition like, you know, like for example, meters or seconds or for that matter, planet, which requires formal definition. So there isn't such a formal definition. It's very loosely defined, but from most sources, we see refraction as bending of light. Now at this point you could say, hey Mahesh, but just because everybody says something doesn't make it right. Like for example, a lot of people said that uh, Earth was flat, <laughs> like for a lot of time, right? But that doesn't make them right. So yeah, well I agree and this is going back to, uh, remember this discussion is not about whether the underlying physical phenomena is right or wrong. This discussion about the definition and, and how do we agree on what definition is right? Well that, basically depends on what we as humanity, we, what we as society agree upon. And so for that definition, I think we should definitely go with something that we collectively agree upon. And how do I know what we collectively agree upon? We'll go and check as many sources as possible, as many credible sources as possible. And that's what I did. And based on that, we agree that refraction is bending of light. But there's a second reason, um, a little bit more deeper if you wanna dig, is we can look at the etymology. And again, let's go over here. So let's look at refraction etymology. Etymology basically means where did the word come from, okay? And that's always a great way to think about, I always try to do that, like, especially whenever I hear new words, I always Google what the etymology is, and if you go over here, you can see the word refraction comes from refrigerants, refract, which means to break up. Let's look at one more etymology somewhere. Um, act of refracting, instead of being refracted, a breaking up, all right? And I looked at some other, as you can see, refract, I break, there is a break over here. So refraction roots from the word break. What is breaking over here? Breaking is the ray of light bending or breaking. So it's, it's no longer straight, it has kind of broken. That's what they're referring to, right? And so is the ray of light breaking over here? No, it's not. 
it's not breaking and so it's not refracting so the origin of the word itself has the word break in it and so that even convinces me more that refraction has something to do with bending the definition is bending and not just that the speed of light changes okay but why would professor verma then define it the way he did in his video like why would he say that well i can think of a couple of points well first point would be let's look at reflection okay whenever light bounces off regardless of the angle at which it bounces off we say it is reflecting right so just for that it might make more sense to regardless of what angle it goes through we'll call it as refraction but my counter to that would be there's a better word for that transmission okay so just like reflection is when the ray of light comes back to the same medium we can say transmission is when the ray of light goes from one medium to another and whenever transmitted light bends we will say that transmitted light is refracted so i think that is a more better way to think about it but a more rigorous counter from professor verma could be that he could say and he should say and i would say i think is let's think about refractive index he might come back and ask i can almost imagine having a debate with him he might come and ask hey mahesh refractive index what is that number refractive index tell you so for refractive index of water is 1.33 what does that number tell you one way to think about it is i could say it's a number that tells me how much light bends it's a, literally a measure of bending because refractive index um from snell's law is the ratio of sin i by sin r so if refractive index for example was 1 it means i and r are equal to each other no bending is happening the more the refractive index values the more it is bending so literally the number is talking about how much it is bending that's what i would say but we know from huygens principle that refractive index can also be thought of as the ratio of the speed of light isn't it right so i could also say that 1.33 it's telling me that the speed of light in water is 1.33 times less compared to speed of light in vacuum that's another way to think about it and professor verma would argue and i would also agree with him that this second definition is much more straightforward you know if somebody asks me hey how do you think about this number 1.33 well i could say you can think of it as how much light bends but you have to take think about sines and you have may have to take sine of inverse and so much it's not very straightforward but if you think in terms of how much the speed of light changes it's pretty straightforward very intuitive and in fact that's what i would ask folks to think of refractive index that way how much speed of light changes how much speed of light decreases when it comes from vacuum into that medium so from from that perspective if it's more straightforward to think of it that way the number is literally talking about how much the speed of light changes so refractive index is a measure of how much speed of light changes so therefore refraction is a phenomena about speed of light changing that is a counterpoint that i think professor verma can give and i don't have anything against that except for i would completely agree with him that that makes so much more sense but it doesn't mean that we can just change the definition just like that right i mean i would still be okay and i would still push and say that let's stick to this definition of bending when it comes to refraction because of all the other evidences that we saw and we could still say from huygens principle it happens to be true that refraction because it is due to the changes in the speed of light refractive index also happens to be a number that tells me how much speed of light changes right so all in all i think that refraction is about refraction definition is about it's bending or not and that's the definition that we agree with that's the uh, that's where the word rooted in refract and therefore when the light is incident normally it does not refract in this video i want to answer the fundamental question why moving charges produce magnetic fields and spoilers einstein